Hi, my name is Natalie Parkerson. I'm also known as Savantis, the celebrity psychic, and I own Tarati.com. I want to thank you for joining me as I discuss how Tarati came to be. People often ask me, how did you become a psychic? Are people born with this gift? Do we acquire it at some point in our lives? And where does it begin? I don't know the exact details of that, uh, but I do know that I did in fact possess this ability early in childhood. I also know that both my mother and grandmother had the gift of clairvoyance. And while skeptics often look to debunk the notion that clairvoyance and intuition are entirely natural, inherent instincts, traits, and even supernatural gifts, how can anyone argue and debate known facts where you have a man or a woman, let's say, for example, sitting at their kitchen table, perhaps reading the newspaper, and therein they have a vision relevant to the article they're reading, and phone the police to inform them where the body of a missing person can be found, and or accurately and with great detail describe the perpetrator behind the crime when they have no connection to the person or persons involved and live perhaps 2,000, 5,000 miles away. And later their information turns out to be 100% accurate. You cannot debate that. I was 22 years old. I mean, you certainly can, by the way. <laughs> but uh, I don't see how you can present uh, a formidable argument uh, uh, when, when clearly the facts are someone in point A knew nothing of someone in in point B and out of nowhere they have a vision uh, and they see what happened how it happened and perhaps who did it so uh, it's really it's uh, inexplicable but I was 22 years old when I recognized that I was clairvoyant and yet still wasn't mature enough to realize the potential involved or even how to harness it and utilize the ability to to help others uh, for me, it was um, it was dreams, uh, dreams that uh, often came true, and the intuition I rarely paid attention to. I began to better understand my gift, probably around the age of 41, back in 2002, while I was living in Ohio. I woke up one morning, and my first thought was, a hospital medevac helicopter is going to crash. That was it. No other thought. Therefore, I couldn't do anything about it since I had no idea where or when until later that afternoon upon watching the news. So earlier that morning, around 12.24 a.m., a helicopter en route to pick up a patient did in fact crash and explode in the hospital courtyard at Cleveland Clinic Hospital where two people were killed. So I could only equate this ability to a person learning to play an instrument. Uh, initially, you know, nothing really makes sense. Uh, they're not actually playing a song, but learning scales, keys, and chord progressions until one day and they bring it all together and they're making music. So in 2012, while beginning my career as a Christian behavioral treatment specialist and psychotherapist, I took notice of what appeared to be the rise of a new trend, online psychic readings. Four things came to mind upon seeing the banner ads for online psychic readings. A, I'm a Christian, a theological seminary school graduate, a psychotherapist, and I'm clairvoyant. So I thought to myself, hey, this would be a great hobby, something I can do in my spare time and still make some money and help other people, and I'd be good at it. You know, when I pray, I always pray for ideas. And one of my seminary school teachers taught us to do that. He said that it's one of the most overlooked things we normally ask for during prayer. So I woke up one morning after having prayed for ideas, and my first thought was to apply at one of those online companies that offer psychic readings. I had no idea how to present myself, where to begin, or what any of the, the services entailed. But I did know I wanted to try it. So I googled online psychic jobs, and one of the top companies in the field was first in the search listing, and that's where I applied. 
I filled out their online application and within 30 minutes I received a phone call from their staff manager. She introduced herself and told me that the next step involved was proving to her that I'm actually clairvoyant. And I did that. And I was hired that day. And I began working there the following day. And I'd say within two weeks' time, I was one of their top psychics. This was a pay-per-minute company, which I'd never really heard of. And back then, the cost was $8 per minute to speak to me. And that was certainly that was far more than anything I made even, you know, as a psychotherapist or, or behavioral psychologist. So that's, what, $480 an hour. So while my intent was to answer the client's questions as soon as possible, the company had a very different agenda. All the calls, the phone calls were recorded. So once I completed a call, I'd often receive a call back from the owner of the company or the manager where they'd immediately begin to play the recording of my last call in order to teach me how to keep the client on the phone much longer. So the, the manager would say, I'm going to teach you how to be a great storyteller because you want to become a great storyteller. Teller. You're, you want to tell them to, to buy candles and you can, they can get candles of a certain color because you're going to give them homework because people love homework. And this is, of course, the manager explaining to me how to keep these people on the phone longer. And that I, I needed to tell them to place crystals under their pillows and, and perform these various chants and, and tell the client that I'm going to teach them to become a love magnet. And then the manager would teach me how to teach them to become a love magnet. Yeah. <laughs> and then I needed to tell them about their beautiful aura and the color of their aura and uh, go into the, the various uh, uh, colors with the, the colorful descriptions and so forth. So the manager would play out part of the dialogue between the client and myself then stop the recording here uh, to demonstrate what I could have said or should have said um, in, in order to keep the client engaged and, and on the phone. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm listening to this and I'm, I'm just thinking this is almost teeters on criminal. This is just vile and and uh, despicable, but I'm listening, and she's the boss, you know. So now today the price at this company is $13 per minute, and I've seen it as high, if you can fathom this, uh, other companies, um, $19 a minute, $25 a minute. Uh, but I think I've put a dent in a lot of that uh, since the inception of Tarati because I've gone – uh, it's a bat uh, for these the women who call these companies, in spite of themselves, uh, essentially um, debunking uh, them. And, uh, well, yeah. So, okay, so for $780 per hour, which is $13 a minute, um, I no longer care if Harold, George, or Tom is coming back to me, okay? Uh, I want to know where the body is buried who did it, and where the police can find them. Uh, perhaps even uh, uh, Kim Jong-un's uh, next uh, plot against the United States, and, um, <laughs> and where, where the next terrorist might be uh, positioning himself. That, that's what I want to know at $780 a, a minute. But unfortunately, you're not going to find uh, anything more than a pep talk and a, and a very good story and something that might temporarily make you feel uh, much better contrary to any truth of any sort. So I had countless young women on welfare with two or three children or people receiving social security disability or senior citizens, and people barely surviving on, on the meager income they received each month, calling to ask how their life will improve, you know, at what, $8 a minute. So, you know, I, I'm thinking... Um, a prayer? <laughs> I just, you know, this is, what do we have here? We're already at uh, six, $16, and I haven't formulated my, my first thought. I, 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 so I had clients who had lost their job and couldn't find work, calling to ask what, if anything, was in store for them, all the while frantic and terrified as to how they're going to make their, their rent or their mortgage. And, and, and the companies want me to delude these people into believing that their miracle is 
was right around the corner and offer up some nonsensical chant or spell or chakra nonsense, encouraging them to go buy candles and keep while well, keeping them on the phone, hoping that they lose all track of time while I dwindle away the minutes as the company rapes their bank account. It was, it was, it was just, um, it was vicious and uh, I don't think it was anything short of, of evil. And these companies also would send out these newsletters that were supposedly prepared by the psychics themselves. So, you know, a, cu a customer might get a, uh, an email that says, hey, Savant is here and I'm here to tell you that uh, September is going to be a phenomenal month for you. Absolutely spectacular. I've been, I've been reading your chart and reading about your life and I can see here that uh, September 19th, uh, there's a, a solid chance you're going to win the lottery. So these people would then call me, or they would call into the company and want to be directed to Savantis to find out what I what I saw about their life. And I'd get them on the phone and I'd say, "Hi, this is Savantis," and they'd say, "Well, this is, you know, this is Margaret, and I got you, I got your email that said I'm going to win the lottery and September is going to be a great month." Well, I never wrote that email. No, no psychic working for the company wrote any of those emails. It was just, you know, some uh, clerk at the desk that's doing its marketing. And I would, I would, I would, as a clairvoyant, I would see that September's essentially going to be a month like, like any other month. So, you know, not now. What do I tell you? But of course, according to the company, they want me to um, elaborate and, uh, of course, paint some fabulous picture here for the client and <laughs> it was it was you know it was just horrific uh, and inhumane really just uh, utterly and, and completely inhumane so a good psychic seemed to be defined by how good of a story they could tell uh, over and above what is really going to happen or is actually happening so as I began to ask myself you know what, what am I doing here? This is disgusting and I can't be a part of this nor associated with it. I suddenly thought of my dad when he was in the army and he was in special forces. He was a Green Beret and they sent him on a very dangerous mission to Russia. He had to enter Russia, you know, dressed as a civilian, so he grew his hair long, grew a beard. And his job, however, was to rescue scientists wanting to defect. So I... I began to realize I was there to learn the horrors of the latest online trend, a serious addiction that was taking women by storm. And it, it was a heroin of sorts, an emotional drug that was putting scores of women in dire financial straits while leading them away from any kind of truth, away from developing a deeper relationship with the Lord, while creating a shallow, irrational, unreasonable, illogical, difficult, and, and very angry people. I, I had a woman who, had, who, had, who was married to a doctor, and, and he left her, and um, she was $80,000 in debt, calling psychics at the company I worked for, uh, being told over and over that they would reconcile and reunite, and I realized very quickly into our conversation that this man was never going to reconcile with her and that uh, for the most part uh, he I, I could see that he'd left her she was severely mentally ill and um, the children had left her but but the bottom line was now she's got the new psychic in front of her savant is here and and she wants to know what I have to say and what a mess I <laughs> What a mess, right? So I quit the Paper Minute Company after establishing two years of employment with them. Initially, I assumed it would be great to combine uh, my gift of clairvoyance with counseling as a professional uh, psychotherapist. And But first, I needed a name for my company. And the moment I gave it any thought, the word Tarati uh, came to mind almost instantaneously, as if it truly were whispered to me by by the Lord himself. And which might seem um, uh, like blasphemy to uh, most Christians or many of them, you know, Taro Tarati, uh, I believe God in his infinite wisdom, he knew exactly what he was doing. 
So with all of the millions of dom domain names out there um, already registered, it's almost hard to you know, come up with anything new. Um, to my shock, Tarati.com was available and I bought it immediately. The next I had to build a website and I did and everything else followed. So it was extremely difficult to find people who were genuinely gifted with clairvoyance and uh, to, to work for me. And once I was able to find a few, I then had to make sure they were also responsible, trustworthy, dependable, knowledgeable, and savvy enough to, to handle the client's money and not fall back on any bogus lies merely to appease the client's hopes and desires for their, their, their perfect outcome. And of course, keep up with uh, the appointments. So finding professional psychics capable of performing all the duties that uh, needed to be handled was also going to be a very difficult task, I came to find out. Because the paper minute companies, you just plug in your phone, and the phone rings. And with me, you had uh, the money when, when the client paid, the money went into their uh, the money went into the, the, the PayPal account of the psychic who worked for me, and they had to get back to the client right away, or you know, within a reasonable period of time, and say, here I am, and I've received your, your payment, and thank you very much, and uh, it's, you know, I want to get you scheduled. And so to get people who, who are actually um, motivated and ambitious and could handle something like their own little business, because they were in, they're all independent contractors, uh, that was going to be a needle in a haystack, and so there I was. So in the first two weeks of Tarati's grand opening, I received a letter stating that Tarati had received negative reviews on the internet, but for uh, $500, I could have those negative reviews expunged. Yes, removed entirely for $500. So <laughs> I was immediately alarmed, and I followed the link that led me to the negative reviews. So there I found a negative review. Uh, so one, one of them said the Tarati had exorbitant prices and that I had told the client their love interest would soon return, but he hadn't, and that I had racked up thousands of dollars from this heartbroken client. Well, it was painfully obvious that the company who wrote to inform me that they could remove the negative reviews was, in fact, the same person who wrote the negative review. So, because I had only been in business for two weeks, um, and I was the only psychic available at that time, and my fee was an exorbitant price of thirty-five dollars uh, per hour, <laughs> and also, you know, if somebody was in crisis or they didn't feel that uh, they were still over Sam, and you know, I couldn't leave anyone crying and sobbing and, and, and devastated. So, I mean, I, I there I would be two hours on the phone, $35, and, um, you know, so so for me to have racked up thousands of dollars from one client was, uh, excuse me, I dropped my microphone, was virtually impossible. Um, and it was then that I learned, you know, you, I, I can't trust the review boards, really nobody should. Um, yeah. So I learned that counseling combined with clairvoyance uh, with clients doesn't work either. Uh, most of the clients had one agenda, and that was a, a quick fix to a far more complex problem. People in the throes of heartache do not want to know how to cope if their love interest isn't returning. They're in agony, and they're used to the lies and tales and fables of pay-per-minute storytellers. So when I come along, and uh, or came along and gave them the truth in conjunction with ideas of how they could better cope with the loss of Bob or or Joe, you know, just all hell broke loose. I was a, a foreign language to them. What do, what do you mean, you know, Bob? Is it, all the other psychics said that Bob was coming. Yeah, he's not coming back. So I was the voice of reason in a very unreasonable situation and with people who have been literally brainwashed. And, uh, you know, I, I just, it was going to, I had my work cut out for me. <clears throat> so the best I can equate the situation uh, is they came for a drug. And that drug was a lie, and I was selling the truth, and um, the clients left feeling robbed and misled, and, and so the painfully grief-stricken, where they didn't get that quick fix like they had at all the other places. So, you know, they were mad at me. <laughs> but
But uh, fact of the matter is, I, I think uh, sometimes we want to be lied to, perhaps. And but I I could not be the heroine of a fix that they needed. They had to. Uh, well, you know, they they had to come to terms with uh, reality and uh, learn the ways in which they could cope. But, you know, not every story ended with uh, uh, you know, a, a no or a negative. Um, there are several, there were several uh, very positive uh, outcomes. And, um, but I mean, it, it, readings can go anywhere. I, I had a young girl Oh, she's probably 22 years old at the time, and a very sweet voice. Uh, she just called to ask if uh, if she she was going to be a nurse. And I'm thinking, first, when somebody calls to ask, am I ever going to be uh, a nurse or a, a fireman? You know, I, I don't know. Are you? You know, you, you, they people will call to ask questions that they themselves can answer. Uh, you know, I mean, I wouldn't need anyone's permission. I wouldn't need to go to any psychic to ask them, hey, listen, I really want to be um, a gardener. And uh, do you think, uh, am I going to be one? Well, I decide that. I, If I want to be a gardener, I'm going to go out and I'm going to do whatever it takes to be a gardener or a lawyer or um, a baker. You know, who knows? But anyway, she wanted to know. So she, in the course of just talking to her, and I love the, this whole paper minute thing is just it's garbage. I I I I'm not gonna. Uh, we gotta talk. If you want a, a professional psychic reading and you're going through um, a situation that's that's you know life and death. I mean your career is life and death. Are you and your husband of 20 years gonna get back together again? We gotta talk about things. And um, anyway, this young gal. She was in nursing school, and she's asking how she would do on this test or that test. And I told her, you know, I, I told her that uh, one she would fail, and uh, the next she would pass. And of course, I was right. But as we're doing this reading, I'm sort of reading ahead of her in my mind, looking at her, looking at next year. I don't know why, but I was, and she didn't know I was. And I saw that she would die. And I thought, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> she's not going to make it as a nurse because she's not going to live to see it. And when I saw what I saw, uh, of course I have. I'm thinking. I'm, you know, I'm, now I'm just trying to engage her in, in casual pleasantries while I'm reading on something un, unbeknownst to her. And I, I saw that she would take her own life. Okay, so I'm thinking, how do you how do you go from reading on how well this young lady's going to do in nursing school to, to trying to figure out how she going to die, how can I stop this uh, train wreck? And I said to her, um, let's say her name is Luann, I'm making that up, but um, Luann, I, listen, I'm going to ask you a question. It, uh, it's a, a little uh, off the beaten path here, but... Um, have you ever tried to commit suicide? Have there been any a suicide attempts with you? And um, the, she just, everything went silent. And there was a bit of a gasp, as I recall. And then it was, I thought I heard her perhaps um, whimpering or as if she was were going to start crying. And this, um, she sort of squeaked out a yes, and uh, with a, a trembling voice, and said, and I said, okay, you, um, and I'm thinking in my head, well, you know, what are we going to do here? Because she has, and she's going to be successful at, at that next year. And then I asked her, you know, what about the surrounding circumstances? So will you have somebody like that at a paper minute? How do you how do you say listen you just continue to pay eight or thirteen dollars an hour a minute here while I try to figure out how we're going to stop you from committing suicide next year and or you know even entertaining it any longer what is the root cause why is this uh, go what's taking place in your life here in any event um, 
She went on to tell me that she had been facilitated twice on, on two different suicide attempts and, uh, and that uh, she's uh, uh, suffered from uh, clinical depression and then she went on to discuss some surrounding circumstances. So at that point, I then said to her, listen, um, anytime you need to call me, you're not to pay one dime. And I, and then she just uh, went on. I, we, we, I took her on as um, uh, for counseling, and she accepted that. <clears throat> so that's how I operate. And uh, but a lot of times, you know, the the, the clients don't want to hear any counseling. I think it's really an insult to tell them that that's that's my my trade. Uh, the the tarotty is really a hobby, and. Um, I, uh, I'm not going to be, um, I'm not going to compromise my values and my standards and people either, uh, they, if they, they really want to know what's going to happen, they can call me or if they want to uh, just feel good for the day and, and they can pay a lot of money for, um, for a lie. But that's how Tarati uh, got its start, and I am very proud to own Tarati. And, and that's this has been uh, all of seven years ago, and Tarati is doing remarkably well. And uh, I do believe it was a gift from the Lord. And I want to thank you for joining me and appreciate uh, the time you've invested to hear my story. Thank you very much.